So I've started to notice a shift in the general discussion on this corner of the internet and I often find myself on. Within this shift, there seems to be three questions that have sparked debate and controversy. These questions are, what is skepticism? Who are skeptics? And what is the skeptic community? So I thought I'd make a video attempting to answer these three simple questions. What is skepticism? Some people will have you believe that skepticism is on a spectrum, and that there's all sorts of different kinds of skeptic. Liberal skeptic, conservative skeptic, feminist skeptic, anti-feminist skeptic, counterculture skeptic, and the purest form of all, the objective centrist skeptic. Which is ridiculous. It's almost like people saying biological sex and gender are on a spectrum, where you can be whatever you want. Which, if that's the case, then I'm an attack helicopter skeptic. Actually, skepticism is a methodology used to come to objective conclusions when forming an opinion about any particular subject. This method requires you to start with multiple solutions to any given problem where you then follow the evidence to a conclusion. Now, if new evidence comes along and contradicts the initial conclusion, then that conclusion shall be changed or altered to fit the new data. Skepticism in this prospect is a lot like science, where you start with an unanswered question and formulate a hypothesis which is then tested in a controlled environment that is later refined if shown to be correct. This process repeats until an accurate conclusion is found that best explains the data and answers the question. Skepticism actually has a long history, with roots going back as far as the 5th century BCE. Eleatic philosophers of this time thought that reality of the sensory world should be questioned and debated. It wasn't until Socrates came along to refine some of these ideas. Socrates believed that if someone was to claim to have knowledge of something, then they should be able to justify it with evidence. If you don't have any way to know if your beliefs are true, then you don't have any reason to hold those beliefs. The word skepticism actually comes from the Greek word skeptikos, translated to mean the inquirer, the one who investigates and searches for knowledge. In the years since then, not much has changed since all skepticism is, is following the evidence to accurate conclusions. While some people will have you believe that skepticism is all about denying everything and being a cynical asshole. It is tempting to think that skepticism can be healthy when in fact it cannot. There is no such thing as healthy skepticism. Or that skepticism is about being a centrist and not taking a side on anything ever, no matter what. And the purest form of all, the objective centrist skeptic. Now, I like to imagine that the armored skeptic character is a centrist objective skeptic, which means he doesn't have an agenda in mind. He's not arguing on behalf of any specific position. It's not. Skepticism is a methodology. Let's look at an example. Two friends come across a number printed on the ground. One says the number is a 9, while the other says that it's a 6. How would you know who was right? Surely someone must have painted it there with the intention of it being one or the other. The skeptical way to approach this first world problem would be to consider that the number could either be a 6 or a 9, and then follow the evidence to figure out what the creator of it had intended. Perhaps you could look closely at the direction of the splatter from the paint to tell the direction the creator was facing when they created it. Or perhaps you could look at the footage from a security camera nearby. Now let's say you find out the number is, oh, I don't know, a 6, and your friend, for whatever reason, denies all the evidence that points towards the number being a 6, and says that it's a 9. You ask why, and your friend tells you it's because his favorite number is 9, and he's a skeptic of the number being a 6. Now despite how silly this example is, it can be compared to a real-world example of pseudo-skepticism. I'm referring to climate change skeptics, as they like to call themselves. Despite the mountains of evidence proving that not only is the climate rapidly changing, but it's caused by humans too. These people who claim to be skeptics are nothing more than dogmatic morons who are incapable of drawing objective conclusions if it contradicts their narrative. Oh, we don't have time for no scientists, he says they don't agree. Likes to spend his time on the internet, shows him what he wants to see. He will drive you around in his Jaguar, he's a BA frequent flyer. He's a middle class, middle brow, middle white, middle aged climate change denier. So that's what skepticism is. But what is a skeptic? Now this one is a bit harder to pin down. In my opinion, a skeptic is someone who both uses skepticism throughout their daily lives to come to objective, accurate conclusions, but also assigns themselves that label. The term skeptic 
like most labels, is a self-assigned one. For example, I'm a cyclist. I call myself one because I invest a great deal of time, money, and energy into that activity. Now, the dictionary definition will tell you that a cyclist is someone who rides bikes, which means if you've ever ridden a bike in your life, even once, you're equivalent to this. Obviously, that's ridiculous, and it shows that when it comes to many self-assigned labels, the dictionary definition falls flat. This is the dictionary definition of a skeptic. It says it's just someone who doubts all accepted opinions with synonyms like cynic or doubter. Why is this? Well, personally, I think it's because definitions of words are used to describe the way the majority of the population uses the words of that language. Just look at the word literally. It's been misused so many times that literally can also mean metaphorically. That's like yes meaning no, or up also meaning down. I think the dictionary definition just goes to show how a majority of the population views skeptics and skepticism. Now considering things like the public's general perception of skepticism, I completely understand why someone may not want to call themselves a skeptic, even if they may match the profile. From what I've seen, there aren't people maliciously demanding people call themselves skeptics like some groups, which I think is great. People should have the right to call themselves whatever they want. I mean, this isn't a culture or religion. It's a methodology. This is where I feel the divide lies. One side believes that there is a skeptic community, and anyone who considers them as a skeptic is a part of that community, by default, whether they like it or not. The other side says that there's no community, and to say there is one is silly. Let's examine these two sides in depth to try to understand. The word community means the condition of sharing or having certain attitudes and interests in common. There's a lot of resistance in the skeptic community to this term, probably because of the homogenous nature of other communities on the internet, but it is an accurate description of what we are. There's no reason not to use the term. Now Sargon's video is trying to encourage the skeptic community to call themselves the skeptic community. My only criticism would be who is included in this we? We are. We should be. If we want, of which we should. We cannot think that we can. But we can. We win. But we provide. If we. If we do. Not. Is your good old fuck buddy Steven Crowder a part of this community? Even though he believes in an invisible man floating in the sky, with just as much evidence as that invisible unicorn that only appears when no one's looking at the foot of my bed. Not to mention his denial of climate science, despite the overwhelming evidence from over 40 years of researching, testing, and peer review, only to then go and cite blog posts from basement-dwelling biased science denialists like himself, resulting in them believing things that contradict the scientific consensus. Okay, what about ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, MSNBC? Every single other news source that's not Fox News is pushing the, cli the man-made global climate, climate change agenda. Sargon, if that's the case, then I'm sure you would consider Rebecca Watson part of this skeptic community too, right? I mean, she's a self-identified skeptic who loves science, fact-based conclusions, and giving entire talks at skeptic conventions, where in one, she attempts to discredit an entire branch of science, using some newspaper articles based off papers published in journals that lack all credibility. I'm going to talk about the scientific facts that girls evolved to shop. Facts. I know that this is a scientific fact because, because this is a science story that has appeared in the science section of major newspapers around the world, not once, but several times. Sure, when you dare question an article concluding that three or more people can come together to naturally merge their genes in reproduction, not because something as absurd as that has been observed, but because there are people with disfigured genitalia. Or if you have the audacity to say that men and women have different brains resulting in different fucking behaviors, her and her dogmatic followers will be the first to call you a fucking transphobic, science-denying bigot. But from what I can see, she's just as much, if not more, of a skeptic than Mr. Crowder. If both these people are skeptics and part of the community, then my favorite skeptic is Reza fucking Aslan, Sargon. The point I'm trying to make with this is if you want us to call ourselves a community, you need to clarify who is considered skeptical enough to be a part of this skeptic community. There also needs to be standards. We can't just say anyone who calls themselves a skeptic is a member of the community, nor can we create a community where we are selective of who is a part of it based solely on if we are friends and agree with them or not. So to reiterate my point, who is we, Sargon? Who are we? Send this video to him.
Spam him until he watches and answers my question. In fact, send this video to everyone I directly address. Now let's take a look at the other side of this ongoing discussion. I mean, how is it a community exactly? Can someone actually tell me how it is other than one shared enemy? This is not a community. This is nothing but a collection of alliances of people who normally wouldn't get along or at least wouldn't talk to each other. But in regards to as a community, no, no. Really? <laughs> If you look at any other group, community, or fandom that exists, either on the internet or in real life, you'll see a pattern of behaviors within those groups. They're prominent figures, art, memes, meetings, conventions, magazines and books, conversations specifically about that thing, and of course, drama amongst the people in that group. If you look at skeptics, you see it's the same exact thing. There's prominent figures, art, memes, meetings, conventions, magazines, books, conversations, and of course, drama. You say that there's too much infighting, but that's true for literally every group or community. And considering the fact that this community is based around questioning things and people, it makes sense that there would be a significantly larger amount of it. So what's the solution to this conundrum? Is there a skeptic community? Or is it just in our heads? Personally, I think the question is a bit of a false dichotomy. There's clearly reasons and evidence to support the idea that there is one, while at the same time there's counter evidence against the idea. Here's my opinion. There are skeptic communities, plural. Groups of people who love the idea of questioning and finding objective truths buried in the evidence. People who exist in small groups to communicate and share ideas expressed in the form of media, of a thing that they have made a part of themselves. To inquire, to desperately search for the truth in a world filled with nonsensical ideas based on feel-good guesses passed from person to person and generation to generation, like a virus or a parasite. A skeptic community is a group of like-minded people who use skepticism to come to their conclusions together because they are sick and tired of trusting someone's claims only to learn that they were led astray for that person's benefit. I am a skeptic, and I am a part of many skeptic communities where we celebrate the key discovered by brilliant philosophers that will finally free the human race from its innate desire to listen and believe authority so many years ago. Now go forth, fellow skeptics, and question Criticize, disprove, discredit, debunk, and destroy everything that is not based on evidence. Show the world who we are and that we won't be silenced, we won't be lied to, and that we want the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you all for watching. One quick announcement before I go. I recently passed 1,000 subs, and I just wanted to say thank you all so much for uh, subscribing and watching my videos. Now that I have a decent number of people watching me, I uh, took the advice from some of my friends and started a t-shirt store, or campaign, I, I don't know what to call it. Anyway, I, I didn't want to do what everyone else does, and plaster my name on a t-shirt. So I taught myself how to art and made some pretty cool designs, which I think anyone can wear in public without feeling weird. Anyway, <laughs> thank you all for watching, and uh, have a wonderful day. Uh, the next question is, many of you are involved or aligned with the skepticism movement. How do you keep an open mind scientifically without using skepticism as an excuse for inaction? Can a person be a product, proactive skeptic? And I think that's is, an interesting are question. Are you kidding? I knew you so, thought. Uh, well, I think, Lawrence, uh, correct me, but people c confuse, and the modern word that's been made up is conflate the word cynicism with the word skepticism. Yeah. It's two different words. Yeah. But I mean, I know not uh, a lot of young people, but one is uh, you're not going to pay any attention to anything. You, you just think everything's screwed up and uh, nothing's ever going to work out right. That's cynicism. But skepticism is you're presented with evidence and you do your best to uh, draw conclusions based on that. So as the saying goes, uh, I am uh, Bill Nye, do you believe in ghosts? No. Uh, however, I'd love to see one. And bring it on. <laughs> if I try to describe myself, I'll say, oh, you know, I'm a humanist, secularist, evidence-based critical thinker, you know, and, and that's what skeptic is, and so yeah. it's good. It's just a, a childish aversion to the term. But the, the, the idea that you can uh, be a skeptic without being an atheist, I think, is absolute fucking nonsense. Oh, really? Yeah, because I'd, if you apply doubt to anything, you think... You, what, what sort of application of doubt have you got if you can't go, oh yeah, by the way, the whole religion thing is obviously a fantasy that belongs 
somewhere a long, long way in the past. I mean, it, it's an absurd, it's an absurd thing to, well, to propose that you're a critical thinker and that you don't believe in UFOs because you know many small pieces of evidence don't, you know, but yeah. blah blah blah, and then and then to say, oh yeah, but I'm, you know, the God thing. It's non-overlapping magisteria. Yeah. Fuck off. Don't be a pussy. Okay.